How can you get all of your carpentry projects to instantly take on a higher, more professional level of appearance? In this video, I'm going to try to talk about something that completely eludes a lot of new DIYers. It's one of those hidden secrets of pro carpentry. In fact, it's so hidden that a lot of people don't even know how to ask about it because they're not really aware that it exists. They only seem to know that there's some subtle element that separates the stuff they're making from the high quality finished projects that they see in custom homes, cabinets, and even pieces of furniture. In fact, this one trim technique is so widespread, so essential to finished carpentry, that you can tend to find some version of it almost anywhere that you see stuff built from wood. So today, I'm going to talk about this ubiquitous but overlooked trim element. In the carpentry trade, it often goes by a simple name. We call it the face frame, and it can completely change your DIY game. Stick around and I'll walk you through it in detail. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. The great thing is this is actually a really easy concept to understand. And once you wrap your head around it, you'll be able to incorporate it into tons of DIY projects. So what is a face frame? A face frame is a set of conjoined trim pieces that conceal the front edges of a cabinet or piece of furniture. It's kind of a boring definition. But face frames are another one of those carpentry techniques that not only conceal a weakness, but they also construct a whole other system of benefits. To illustrate it a little better, we'll look at everything from a newcomer's point of view. And we'll start with the problem that most new DIYers eventually run into. Say they want to create a shelf or a set of shelves. Right off the bat, they'll tend to conceive of it only in terms of flat boards. I mean, that's what shelves consist of, right? Just boards running horizontally that sit on or intersect with vertical boards. So a new DIYer will go so far as to build this set of shelves. They'll attach pieces through their ends and create this sort of box-like structure, similar to my mini mock-up here. And they might even go so far as to cut and attach a back panel of thin plywood. When it's all said and done, if they've used the right fasteners and techniques, they'll have a functional little set of shelves. But the problem is, it still won't quite look right. It looks kind of thin and spare, and furthermore, if they've used plywood or MDF for the shelves, they'll have these ugly exposed edges. I know a lot of modern furniture uses an exposed plywood edge, but most people don't want it in their projects, at least not by accident. So what our new DIYer has overlooked at this point is that so far they've only reached basically the 50 yard line. They built what in cabinet making we call a carcass, which is basically the body of a cabinet or set of shelves. But to achieve that fully developed, finished look of a professional set of shelves, that body now needs a face. So pro carpenters and woodworkers will often make or attach a lattice of narrow trim pieces to the cabinet so that they sit perpendicular to the unfinished edge. Sometimes they'll construct the whole face frame as sort of a free-floating picture frame, and then attach it to the cabinet as one big piece. And by the way, they'll often construct the face frame using pocket screws hidden on the back side of the frame. I just did a whole video on pocket screws, so check that one out if you want a little more explanation. Other times though, they'll simply shoot face frame pieces on one at a time in sort of a puzzle fashion. I did pretty much everything in the shop this way, adding glue at every joint surface and connection. Whatever the case, the new face frame, once installed, does a bunch of positive things. Not only does it hide ugly ply edges, it also gives the whole unit a more substantial look. Just look at the difference between an unfinished shelf edge and one with a nice clean face frame attached. The project instantly looks more professional. And it doesn't just improve appearance, face frames are also capable of strengthening a shelf. Because they sit 90 degrees in relation to the edge of the shelf, they actually add a little bit of span support, like a mini beam. If they're well attached with glue, face frame members will stiffen all the horizontal runs at the front of the cabinet. And I've also used them creatively over the years to hide other support members. Woodworkers will often use dados or wide grooves to bring shelves and walls together. But dados are harder and a little more laborious to make. If I'm moving fast, I'll actually just glue and shoot little cleats beneath my shelf ends to help carry their load. A wide enough face frame will conceal these helper blocks completely, and cabinet doors will often be attached directly to the face frame. And that's really ideal because the face frame gives this wide, flat surface for the door to shut against. So face frames have huge upsides and they're really easy to construct with a little practice. But having said all this, I will point out that a lot of modern cabinetry and shelving has sort of steered clear of face frames. Builders have opted instead for a more clean, narrow look. It's considered more elegant and wide face frames are thought to be old fashioned by some. But I'll also point out that modern builders still have to address the exposed edge somehow. If they're building with plywood, they may edge band all their forward-facing pieces with glued-on strips of laminate. 
or they may use a screen trim, which is basically a face frame that's only as wide as the board edge, also glued on and shot into place. At the very least, they're carefully dressing the edges of natural lumber with sanding and joining techniques to give them the best appearance possible. So it's not like those techniques are less laborious. They're actually often harder to achieve for newcomers. But face frames really aren't that hard. The building techniques to make them are extremely similar to the building techniques that you use to make a carcass. And if you'd like to see some examples of how it's done, just watch some of my other how-to videos. I've put together really fast face frames in many of them, and I'm sure I'll tackle even fancier ones in future videos. So that's how face frames work. As you plot your future cabinet and shelving projects, you can now consider tying them in. You'll be amazed at how quickly your work takes on a more professional look and also takes on strength in the process. What did you think of this video? Was it helpful? Do you use face frames or do you prefer the more modern look of a narrow finished edge? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I always link tools and materials down below in the description. And these days, I'm also setting up a new Amazon storefront containing many of my favorite tools all in one place. So be sure to check that out in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.